Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're going to take a look at the MP153 which in my opinion is one of the best shotguns in the game. I've been having a lot of fun with this build so stick around and let's get going. As usual today we're going to start with the basics of this weapon and build up to my favourite builds for this shotgun that I've been using recently. The MP153 is an all time favourite of many a budget conscious player and those who want to punch upwards so to speak in the gear hierarchy giving you options to kill geared players with something much cheaper. Out of the various shotguns in the game, for pure utility the MP153 is one of the best primarily because it's semi-auto, along with the Saiga 12. This allows you to get a lot more done with this weapon and puts it in a similar category as some of the other high powered semi-auto weapons. You can buy it from Jaeger 2 for 29,000 rubles or barter 2 wrenches and 2 screwdrivers for it with Jaeger 1 but this usually comes to around the same price. Alternatively there is another bar to a skier level 1 for some of the lowest value keys in the games which is the Yatota key, the car key and the 6 pack or the Vaz key which allows you to buy it for around 15,000 which is pretty good value. The stock weapon has 35 ergonomics and 255 vertical recoil. As usual with the semi autos we can get away with a much higher recoil as the time between shots is far lower but we need the ammunition to make up for the lower fire rate which we'll discuss a bit later on as it will affect how you use this gun practically. In terms of the builds, the 153 is not a particularly complicated weapon. Important points are the barrels, the stocks and the magazines, so starting with the barrels there are four to choose from. The default barrel is already the longest which is the best for recoil reduction but worst for ergo as usual in Tarkov modding, giving minus 10% recoil reduction at a cost of 20 ergo. This scales down to minus 4% recoil on the shortest barrel with minus 7 ergo penalty and you also get a bit more accuracy with the longer one if you're looking at taking more long range shots. For a cheap build let's keep the long barrel and next look at muzzles. The Remington Tactical gives minus 8% with no ergo penalty and is only 3200 rubles from Skier 2, however this one isn't very good. To access the better muzzles you'll need the ME Cylinder from Jaeger 1 for 2000 rubles which reduces ergonomics by 1, but this allows us to attach the Hexagon 12K Suppressor, the GK02 and the Monster Claw. The Hexagon is the most cost effective way to get a suppressor on the 153, reducing recoil by 16% at a cost of 22 to ergonomics. You can get this from Prapor 2 at a cost of 25,000 and a little more on the flea. The alternative suppressor is the Silencer Co Choke Adapter which reduces recoil by 1% but is unfortunately found on Mechanic 4 for 1000 who is the hardest trader to get to max level. However this allows attachment of the Silencer Co Salvo 12 again from Mechanic 4 for 40,000 rubles which reduces recoil by 18 but at a cost of 23 ergo. Going back to the cylinder adapter the middle ground muzzle break is the GK02 with a minus 14% recoil and minus 1 ergo which can be found on Jaeger 2 for 4000 rubles but these are actually a really common drop in raid so are even cheaper and plentiful on the flea. However, if you want the ultimate in recoil reduction, the Monster Claw is an absolute beast with minus 24% recoil reduction at the cost of 5 ergonomics. This is another Mechanic 4 special however and costs about 10,000 rubles. Next up we're going to be covering a really important point about magazines. You really want to be upgrading to the 8 round mags if you can. There really is no reason to keep a small mag in your weapon and with 1 round in the chamber and 4 in the mag this is a huge upgrade going to 8 plus 1 instead. There are two versions of the 8 round mag, one for the 153 with minus 6 ergo and one for the 133 with minus 2 ergo. I literally cannot find the difference between these so let me know if there is one in the comments but there appears to be an oversight here. Either way use the 133 version. It's also available earlier at Jaeger 2 with the other one at Jaeger 3. How weird. So now they're at 26 ergo but with 146 recoil let's have a look at the stocks. The two standard stocks are basically the same and we have two other choices here. The pistol grip version from Jaeger 1 at 7000 rubles comes with a little rail to attach micro optics like the PK06 or my favourite the delta point but this makes the recoil pretty much double so I'm not a fan of this. However the optic is really close to your face so it makes the overall reticle a bit bigger. Alternatively using the Tula stock adapter from Skier 1 at 2500 rubles with minus 2 ergo lets you add the fab defence pistol grip for 3k from Skier 3 and gives 9 ergonomics. Then this unlocks the ability to use the fab defence buffer tube for minus 2% recoil and from here you can use a vast array of stocks. The typical best stock here is the trusty MOE with a butt pad from Peacekeeper 3 with combined 33% recoil reduction and an ergo of plus 10. This gets us to 141 vertical recoil. On accessories for mounting optics you have either the choice of the ETMI from Jaeger 1 for 2000 rubles or the SPRM mount for 3500 rubles from Jaeger 2 with minus 1 ergo. There is also a bad barter for matches and SIGs if you don't have the levels. I prefer the SPRM as it's closer to the eye which makes the reticle look better. Optics wise you can use whatever and as I said I like using a delta point but it's, it's personal preference. One other thing you can do is add the Sprut, everyone's favourite laser hoarding device on which you can add the usual selections of lasers and flashlights. I like the blue laser just for targeting at close range which brings the overall build to 34 ergo and 141 recoil. 
Checking the price of all these mods comes to 68,000 from the traders, and if you buy the 153 using the barter with the keys, you can get the overall build for 83,000 rubles, which is super cost effective for what it is. What's more, this weapon is the ultimate boomerang gun, because you can't remove the pistol grip, it makes it 7 slots long and 2 slots wide, which isn't worth putting in a bag, and normally not worth putting in the secondary weapon slot either. Usually, the worst case is that you'll lose the attachments like the optic, the stock, the muzzle and the laser, and the rest will come back on insurance, which is also really cheap, at only 15,000 rubles as the parts are low cost from the traders in the first place. The ergonomics of 34 seems pretty bad, but it doesn't actually make a great deal of practical difference, which we'll show in a moment, but for those who are more sensitive to ADS speed, you can build the same weapon using the short barrel instead, which gets you to 47 ergo and 168 recoil. Comparing these two, the low ergo version ADS is in 10 frames or about 165 milliseconds, and the high in 8 frames or about 133 milliseconds. Whether you think that this is worth it versus the slightly increased recoil is a choice you'll have to make. The lower recoil loses the sight of the target for about 10 frames when you fire, versus the short version at about 12. The higher ergo version is also very slightly more expensive, as you have to buy the short barrel for 7,500 rubles, but you can also sell the long one that you got with the gun back to mechanic for 4,000, so it ends up being a net cost of about 3k. On ammunition, this will really determine your playstyle. I like to go conventional and use the best pen I can, which is the AP20s, and aim for centre of mass. However, these are only available from the traders at level 4 Jaeger, and at 320 rubles each from the trader, and 1000 rubles from the flea, they can be quite expensive. The pen is not the best at 37, which for reference is the same as 545BT and 556M856A1, but given it has 164 damage, it will usually power through armour by destroying it first and then penning afterwards. Other options are the standard buckshot and going for headshot sprays, or magnum buckshot and going for legs for the pure damage. Finally, Flechette can also be an option on Jaeger 3 for 79 rubles, but it is cheap on the flea market as well as an alternative to AP20. This has 31 pen, which is roughly the same as 762 PS, but with 8 darts can do decent armour damage and can smash through level 3 face shields, which is useful. However, unfortunately each dart only does 25 damage, so it doesn't headshot on its own with one individual dart. I personally find Flechette a bit inconsistent, but I say this tentatively as I don't have a huge amount of data to back this up. Either way, I tend to use this build when completing the quest setup, hence I normally have level 4 traders by this stage, so I can use the full build. Let's next have a look at a few scenarios, and if you do run it yourself, then do enjoy. Kill someone quite sweaty. I don't really know how that happened, even. Now we big boys. The rival's armband, though. No pre-fire for him. Yeah. I just kind of sprayed at him as well. I wasn't really thinking about it too much. Uh, okay. We got, like, the basically the, like, king of dorms spawn. So, what I might do... If I just can, if I can just like run this way, I might be able to catch some people off guard. Got him, boys. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? That was exactly what I wanted to ha have happen there. Carasa, we don't want that. Yeah, how many times do you have to run Woods last wipe to kill Sturman? Yeah, I, that's what I was saying. Like thirty. It was. It was. It was insane. Okay. Sounds like a scav. Must be a scav. Yeah, it's a scav. <laughs> right, well I don't think anyone else is actually in, in here, to be honest. Because I got here so quickly. Was that a ghost footstep or something? 
Oh no. Once we've got Thorax healed, we can reload the gun and then um, go on healing everything else. Maybe they came through like the top. Uh, maybe they actually were like over sort of like gas station side and then went along the wall maybe and then came in through the, the well, the, the, the south side, but the, the north side on the regular map. He's also level 10. There's a Mosin. Oh, he's only level six. Oh, he had he had a motion as well. Okay, should probably start moving moving out. Honestly, given my armor is a bit low. Car's still there, so I wish I'd bought some. Wish I bought some money or something. If we get closer than like and and it's okay. Any more? Yes. There's always one more. At least we looked. But never mind. We got five kills, I think. So that's uh, that's good. Head eyes, eyes. Oh, one, one headshot. Okay. I'm not wearing. I'm not wearing a helmet. So, but that was a, that was not a bad run. That was not a bad run, honestly, for that quest. That was that was, a, that was pretty good going. Shame we didn't leave. But I actually quite like that shotgun build. That shotgun build was decent. If you learned something or enjoyed today's video and want to support the channel, please, as always, consider sending a like and a comment, as it helps with visibility for those who haven't found me yet on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch to check out when I'm live, which is currently two times a week, once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the real-time recording of the Scab Talk podcast, which you can check out the link to in the description below, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time in the afternoon. And with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.